Well, and Jones, uh, there are some ways of, uh, quote, avoiding tax that are legitimate. Uh, agreed? Not in the way you phrased it there. Let's be clear about what tax avoidance actually is. Tax avoidance is not paying tax Parliament expected you to pay or intended you to pay by legislation. You're going against the spirit of the law, not the letter of the law. Which is the quote that I gave. Absolutely. You. You're exploiting loopholes that almost by definition weren't intended to be there by legislation. So an example, an ISA. This is one that's always thrown around. What about an ISA? Mm. An ISA is an intentional government scheme. It's there to incentivise... legislated for. Exactly. Saving. It's the same with duty-free. Uh, if you have uh, goods from within the EU, you can get an unlimited amount. Outside the EU, then you have a duty-free allowance. If you exceed it, you have to pay tax. Okay. So it's it's just very straightforward. If, if you're going against what the government intended you to do, then when it comes to tax, you're avoiding tax. So the, 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 there's some what is often called tax avoidance, but they're legitimate government schemes and maybe tax avoidance is not the right phrase no. to use. The other kind of tax avoidance is wrong. What do you say? Well, I think that um, what the, the position that Owen's just set out is more subtle than Ed Miliband's position. Ed Miliband appears to be condemning tax avoidance in principle. And the difficulty with that, as you pointed out in your intro, is that you have to condemn people who buy whiskey in airport duty-free shops, take advantage of ices and so on and so forth, which is absurd. Um, the other difficulty is that you're, you, you're then holding other people to a standard that it's quite hard to live up to yourself. I think the problem with your position, Owen, is that it still enables you to condemn some aggressive forms of tax avoidance, and just not all tax avoidance. But how then can you justify working for The Guardian, which I think, by your own standards, engaged in aggressive tax avoidance, when in 2008 well, it paid no tax at all on the 300 million it realised from well, the sale of auto trader because it okay. set up okay. a tax shelter on the Cayman Islands. I've got, got a very, very straightforward response. I am responsible for my tax affairs and nobody else's. I'm not responsible for my employer's tax affairs, my landlord's tax affairs, my uh, my postman's tax affairs, your tax affairs, Andrew's tax affairs, or indeed my former employer's tax affairs over here, which I'm sure were completely <laughs> oh, above board. And absolutely, and I have an accountant, I've mandated my accountant uh, in order to not pay, not to do anything which can be construed is even remotely like tax but, one, which but, I, what, I admit is probably quite unique. Uh, what what to, sort of to, tax to avoidance, or what action should be taken uh, to stop of what's being called the aggressive tax avoidance. It involves big bucks, and, it, as, and as you said, it involves um, complying perhaps with the letter of the law, but not, not the, the spirit. spirit. You're doing what the law didn't intend you to do. Well, there's a number, I mean, there's legislation, draft legislation, which was actually drafted by Richard Murphy, who's a leading crusader mm -hmm. against tax avoidance, a chartered accountant, which establishes an anti-tax avoidance principle in law. And the reason partly we have to clamp down on this and because tax avoidance is a choice. It's not something mm. which you're forced to do. You're making a conscious decision. No, you do it to mitigate the amount of well, tax. Take Starbucks. Starbucks, what they do is they have foreign entities. They offload losses mm. from abroad to make it look like they're not making any, mm. uh, any, t any profits mm. in this country. Now, your local cafe cannot do that. No. They're put at a competitive disadvantage by these large corporations, for example, which actually help but, to drive those... But, but you're right, but can I, I'll come to you in a second. Yeah. Can I just point out that they were able to do that because they were encouraged to do it by EU legislation. It was EU policy to encourage these companies to lodge their intellectual property rights in Luxembourg and put, create their headquarters there. Politicians wanted to do that. They then exploited it by transfer pricing that meant they didn't make any profit and, here. And part of the problem is, as the way the law is designed, both oh. at the EU level and here, and part of that problem are big accountancy firms who are seconded to government, they help draft tax law, and then they go back. And then they go to their clients the to tell how court. you avoid paying okay, the taxes. Let, that, let uh, me, that I'll bring you in, in a minute. But, but, but you must it's accept tough. that, it, that it, it does make you look a tad hypocritical to condemn a company like Starbucks for engaging in aggressive tax avoidance, but to work for a company like The Guardian, well, which I've is said, guilty of exactly the same thing. But why, why not I'm condemn The Guardian then as well? I'm if, if, I mean, I, I have no idea what The Guardian's tax affairs are. I'm not the accountant what of The about, Guardian. What about, so, what about Unite the is... Union, Owen? Um, in, it, it, it's, it's become clear that in 2011 and in 2012, Unite earned something like five million mm -hmm. uh, from its investment portfolio and didn't pay a single penny, nothing on tax, Again, I'm on here, those earnings I'm... because of its exploitation Toby, of a tax Toby, loophole. I'm here, are you going to condemn I'm Unite? Here as someone who is accountable for my tax affairs. If I... Listen... All right, no, we, we, let, let's, if, let's leave if, that, because we're going round in tax, circles. Then you would let have me, so every reason to win. All tax avoidance. Hold on. Every let, single form of tax let, avoidance. Let me ask you, what tax avoidance do you think is uh, unacceptable? Well, I think at the margins, um, where companies are engaging in really aggressive tax avoidance, which are on the fringes of the law, 
uh, then I think that, um, that, 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 that they're, they're acting wrong. Would you have an example of, of that? Well, I've just given you an example yeah. of Unite. Um, Unite didn't pay any tax oh, in 2011 How convenient, how convenient. it happens to be an organisation. John Reid, the um, former Labour Home Secretary, ended up sharing a home with his partner, bought with money that was protected in a tax shelter in the British Virgin Islands. Um, Peter Mandelson recently took out a loan of £400,000 from a company that he was the sole shareholder well, agree. in. That looks to me I, I it's whether, 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 it's, whether it's Labour so, politicians or Conservative politicians, whoever, I mean, you've, you've chosen people you object to, whoever it happens to be, yeah. tax avoidance is absolutely wrong. And the point is this, we're going through now the longest uh, fall in living standards people have endured since the Victorian era, the worst cuts in generations, whilst rich people at the top feel that they do not have to pay do tax, whilst the rest of us, we don't have accountants who can exploit tax laws, we have to pay our taxes, the, it's the not fair and defensible. The people who are doing the aggressive tax avoidance, they have to account for them themselves on that. And HMRC is chasing mm. quite, quite a lot. Mm. But aren't the, the, the politicians culpable on this? The tax code in Britain is now 12,000 pages long. It's one of the longest in the world. Uh, I think maybe only the German one might be longer. It's full of tax breaks to do things which politicians approve of. It used to be film funds. It was putting money into pensions. It was saving. It was startup for entrepreneurs, all sorts of breaks. It's not surprising that the people who can afford the best accountants then go and find ways to exploit but these tax breaks, is it? Let's not make excuses, because... That's not, not, no, no, it's no, not no, an no, excuse. It, it, it's it, a possible it, explanation. It, it, it isn't an explanation, because take Gary Barlow, for example, who... Explo I mean, there are different forms of tax avoidance. You're but, saying aggressive forms of tax, tax avoidance. They're all wrong. Obviously, this is the but more... But he was at the right fire No, 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 no. But not? the thing about this is some people make the choice not to exploit loopholes. You don't have to. You're not compelled to. You're not forced to by law. Yes, those loopholes need to be clamped down and our politicians need to be held to account for the fact they use big four accountancy firms to help draw the tax law and then those accountants help to tell their clients how to avoid the laws they've written up. That's I'll a conflict okay. of interest. I'll give, give you another say, then I'll come, then I'll come to you. Come okay, to you. Well, one final point I'd like to make. Are you going to make it something about me again? Well, if, are you going to actually answer? Well, let's hear. If, if you make a distinction between what people are obliged to pay under the law and what they should pay because you invoke some notion of fairness, mm. then presumably, Owen, you think that people earning the kind of money you're earning should be paying so more in tax. The guard, that, would be, that would be fairer, and the money you've earned through book sales on Amazon and other... Presumably, if you think... One, but if, okay, anyone who says that there's a distinction between what you should pay legally and what you should pay in fairness, anyone who thinks that and who thinks that higher earners should be paying more in tax, as I think you do, well, then why don't they pay more in tax than they're legally obliged right. to pay? Why not pay more tax what, voluntarily. What, what's, what's, wrong with the, what's wrong with in preparing your tax return? And of course, we, we have to remember this is a, 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 a license that's not really allowed to people on PAYE. It's, it's more high earners. But what's wrong with saying, all right, I'm going to pay what, I, what the law says I have to pay. I'm paying yeah. my taxes. But I'm not going to volunteer to pay any more. And if, if there's a way which I can mitigate it legally, What's wrong with that? I think it's, rather than being wrong, I'd call it, which is a sort of taught phrase, i call it morally suboptimal. It would be nice if lots of people... And well, big so you said mor morally <laughs> suboptimal. Very because well. It would be, be nice if lots of big companies that were very, very rich were paying slightly more in tax. That would be nice. But it's not rational to expect a company which has shareholders or individuals to go out of their way to comply with the letter of the law. It's not going to happen. It would be good if they did. Mm. It would be good if there, were, um, if there were more in tax receipts from them. But we've got to play off a couple of competing factors here because the fact is it's a very muddled message from the British government, right? Aggressive tax avoidance is wrong, says George Osborne, but if you're a company that pays not as much tax as you should, but you come to Britain and you set up lots of jobs, that's an economic upside which we really want. And I think that's a slightly muddled message. Well, a really important point about companies is companies depend on the state. They depend on the state for a bailed out financial system, bailed out by not free market dogma by the state. They depend on infrastructure. They depend on an education system to train their workforce. They depend on in-work benefits to subsidise the no, low we wages. The point. But, no, but it's a really important point because... No, often, Oh, you're coming to a often, conclusion because I'm running out of time. Well, often there's a sense that companies are almost these charities and they're always giving this money out of no, the goodness no, no, of their no, heart. No, 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 but they a, depend no, on no, the state no, but, and therefore but, they should contribute but, to right. the In fairness, in a, in a world, a globalised economy where mobile, where capital and labour are incredibly mobile, companies that are subject to incredibly strict tax laws might go overseas. And we need an international solution partly, of course yeah. you're absolutely right. That's not an excuse not to start in this country. Well, stick with us. Don't go away. Can't let you go just yet when you get our money's worth.